what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm gonna be showing you the latest nezuko OS version 1.2 on the redmi k20 pro android r or android 11 and here you get the g apps download link so this build includes the g apps in the rom file itself i'll put all the links in the description box below and if you want to flash this rom check the card right there and by the way this build is a oss vendor based build and this build is by sheriff rahim let me just go into the about section and this is how the about section looks like and you will see it looks a lot different it shows the doggy coin logo up there or the doge coin you might call it that way it says to the moon so that is great that it has really a good trend kind of significance in the about section and here it shows all the like specifications and the device name over here and if you tap on the nezuko version it shows you the telegram group of them and in the android version this is how it looks like we have the nezuko logo pretty like bold kind of look over here pretty colorful and if you tap on the android version as you can see this is based on android 11 of course let me go back the security patch is latest of april 5th 2021 and the stock kernel here is the immx nes kernel over here and you can see the build number from here and as you are noticing this is the 22nd april 2021 build by the way right now let me just jump into the system section and we do have a system updater and yeah dogs are barking behind and if i click on check for updates as you can see it fails so i'm not really sure if the stock updater will work but yes this updater you get by default and it shows some information about the nezu goes over here again let me go back we have the other things like the gestures over here so we have the quickly open camera and we have the gesture navigation from here if you go into the settings we have the gesture bar length customization and you can see the pill bar is quite long right now because i changed that and we have the dead zone then the haptic feedback and we also have the advanced gestures so if you want extended swipe action and stuff you can use them from here then we have the three button navigation i am not really sure why there is no two button navigation by the way and here we have the swipe take screenshot and as you can see this is how it takes the swipe to take screenshot and there is the long screenshot edit and share and delete options so yes you can use all those options from here inside power menu we have the device control and the sensitive content and by the way this is how the power menu looks like we have the google smart home controls you can turn on the lights if you have some smart light in your house and if you tap restart we have the directly rebooting option to recovery or fast boot from here so advanced reboot is there and we also have the front camera settings so from here we have the camera led then the front camera raise dialogue and the front camera sound effects and we also have the calibration option for the front camera motor over here the stock keyboard over here is gboard because this build of course has g apps included but first let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like to the left we have the google's discover page and you get these many live wallpapers by default and from here you can of course download them and use them let me go back we have also these living universe wallpapers over here the live wallpapers of google they are working fine and also these like kind of google wallpapers like captured on pixel for fun pride etc google arts and stuff you get here by default so plethora of wallpapers that you get over here on this rom and by the way this is how the recent panel looks like over here you can take a screenshot you can select some text or you can go all the way to the left of the recent panel and clear all the apps from here and by the way this is the pixel launcher that we get by default swiping up gets you to the app drawer swiping down over here gets you to the notification or the quick settings panel and here as you are noticing the widgets and stuff are working fine now let me show you the stock things like the stock camera well this is a kind of disappointment because this is not a really good camera in my personal opinion but you can definitely install a next camera if you want to on your device by clicking on that card right there and you will see the flashing guide over there for the ANX camera and you will get it working if you flash it that way. Also I have installed couple of Gcams over here so you can install this Nikita Gcam and stuff they are working perfectly fine. I'll put the links for that in the description box below also for the XML and stuff and here the video mode is only crashing but the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens everything is working fine as you can see but as soon as I switch to the video mode even with the like main camera you will see it's, it crashes. But yes the front camera and stuff is working as you can see so yeah no issues whatsoever you can use the front camera with the google camera and stuff if you want to sometimes it crashes the front camera if i open it like for the gcam version i am using over here also there is the moto audio over here tuned by dolby it says so this actually works fine over here on this rom and the sound quality of this rom is amazing and even you can like put it on the smart audio the sound quality via the headphone jack and the bluetooth as well and also with loudspeakers the sound quality is great on this rom no issues that i have had with the sound quality here you can also like change these modes 
So yeah, really great option that you have by default. Talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like. You can edit and add multiple toggles. I have already added a couple of toggles. So let me just quickly show you heads up disabling option and stuff, of course. And then we have this oxygen OS kind of screen recorder with that. You can change the resolution, the bit rate, then the frame rate, audio source, etc. You can change from here. So this is great that we get the oxygen OS kind of screen recorder over here. Also, we have the dark theme and stuff. Then we have the smart pixel. The FPS counter is also there as you can see and here if you enable this the FPS counter will show up on the top left of the screen. Then we have this high brightness mode so if you enable that the screen just becomes too much bright as you can see and it is working right now as you are noticing the screen is just like goes bonkers and it goes really bright. Then we also have the DC dimming feature if you want to use that. But sometimes with the DC dimming, I have seen the fingerprint scanner works in a fishy way. But I cannot find the reboot toggle, but there is the like mute and stuff. And if you hold on it, as you can see, you get the volume panel over here. So if your volume buttons are broken, you can just tap and hold on this sound toggle and you will get the volume panel like this. Right now, let me just jump into the settings. And here we have the Nezuko extras on top and we have the click to take partial screenshot here. Enable advanced reboot is there. Then we have the power menu. If you scroll down, we have the animations. And from here, you can change the screen of animation to CRT scale or default. And we have scrolling cache and stuff. Then power menu animations are there. And we have animation style changing option. This is for the quick toggles, I guess. Then we have the toast animation as well. Then inside system theme, we have the pitch black, then the Google dark, etc. light options, etc. And header size, you can change that from here. Then we have the nav bar color changing option. Then we also have the status bar height changing option. Then of course we have the rounded corners and if you're noticing these rounded like kind of windows over here, this is because of this rounded medium settings. You can also put it to large if you want really rounded like corners over here in every window. And we have the sensor block per package, smart pixels are there and you can customize that. Then we have the screen edge lighting. This is for the like edge lighting notifications and stuff. Then if I move into the lock screen, we have the force fingerprint authentication. So that is great. But this force fingerprint authentication option is kind of broken. As you can see, I have rebooted the device, but the fingerprint option did not show up. But yes, with face unlock, it did unlock. So yeah, it is kind of like working the other way. It's not using the force fingerprint option, but it's actually using the force face unlock, if you can call it that way. So yeah, and we have the fingerprint authentication vibration and stuff. Then disable quick setting when locked and stuff is there. Lock screen double tap to slip is there. And we have the FOD icon picker. From here, you can pick any kind of like icons from here. As you can see, plethora of icons are available. I'll change it to this one. Also, we have these fingerprint pressed color changing option. Then we have the FOD recognizing animation. From here again, we get the plethora of options. And we also have this Cyberpunk 2077. So yeah, and we have the other things like the force brightness values for the ambient display. Media cover art, lock screen charging info, status bar option is there. And inside status bar, we have the quick settings option. And from here, you can tint quick setting tiles over here. If you want to background opacity, you can change that. Then we have the other things like the custom header. Then column and row number customization is there. And status bar double tap to sleep is also there. Then we have the clock options. You can put the clock into center or something if you want that as you are noticing. And we have the date style and stuff. Then the AM PM style. Also, you can change those. If you scroll down, we have the network traffic indicator. Then if you scroll down again, we have the battery style and you get plethora of battery styles here that you get the big dotted circle and stuff. And also the big circle over here is present. So this is very cool. And from status bar like tuner, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons enabling option. Then from here, we have the battery percentage enabling option. Then from here, you can enable it. As you're noticing right now, the battery percentage is there and we have the battery percentage when charging and stuff. Then we have the vaulty icon choosing option. Yes, vaulty and stuff should be working flawlessly even though I don't have a SIM card in the device right now, but they should be working fine. Even we have the view Wi-Fi icon changing option. So that is great. And kill app button in the notification is there. Then if you move into hardware, we have the playback controls then the volume steps. And if you go back, we have the screen of power button toggle torch. Then the invert layout option is there. And there is also the automatic turn off for the long press toggle torch and stuff. Then this is very cool that if you go into this Nezuko Health, you will get the daily kind of information about the pandemic situation of India. And you can see the like notification kind of stuff. You can get some notifications if you enable these options and it shows daily cases and stuff. So yeah, very helpful. And in the Nezuko themes, this is how it looks like. We have the clock style changing option. And as you are noticing plethora of lock screen clocks that you get here. And also there is the Samsung kind of clock, then the Fluid OS clock and the S-Funny one. And I'm going to use this Cal clock over here. Let me actually show you how it looks. 
So as you are noticing, this is how the lock screen clock looks like. Looks pretty beautiful in my opinion. And in the always on display, this is how it will look. So very cool kind of like lock screen clock that you are getting. And if you tap and hold on the fingerprint scanner icon, and as you are noticing, the fingerprint scanner is very fast over here and very snappy experience that you are getting. Let me show you one more time from the lock screen. As you are noticing, unlocked fine. Let me show you with my left hand thumb from the lock screen and it unlocked fine. But sometimes I have seen if this disdeeming is turned on from the always on display it does not work sometimes but right now it's working okay so i think it doesn't work in very low brightness let me to very low brightness and right now if i try to unlock as you can see it's not unlocking so this is how it is and if i right now increase the brightness and turn off the dc dimming mode let me actually turn off the dc dimming and just like use the fingerprint scanner like this as you can see with low brightness without dc dimming turned on the fingerprint scanner works fine, but with low brightness, if I enable DC dimming, the fingerprint scanner just does not work. Keep in mind that is with the lowest brightness possible over here. And the screen really goes very low and very bright in this ROM. Let me go back. We have the volume panel style changing option and you can change it to AOSP and default and others. And with the default one, this is how it looks. And if you choose the AOSP one, as you can see, you get the like expanding option of the volume panel. You can change it. And then we have the system theme option again we have these kind of options over here let me scroll down we have the font picker so from here you can have plethora of font options then we have the app icon shape changing option then also the system tracing options are there let me jump into the battery settings this is how it looks like and definitely i would say this settings looks very cool and very different from other custom roms in my personal opinion and if you want to see the full battery usage you just tap here and yes fast charging and stuff everything is working and as you can see there is the screen on time then the battery like temperature and stuff you can change also the scale of the battery temperature shows the 34 degrees celsius and smart charging and stuff is there we have the flash led when battery is low then we have the thermal profiles too you can change it per app basis and we have the battery saver and the turn on light when charging this is for the notification light on the pop-up camera and flash led when the battery is low and stuff let me go back in the display settings we have these kind of custom display settings we have the dc dimming mode then the high brightness mode which i just showed you from the quick toggles so yeah both are working great and you can definitely use the high brightness mode when you are outdoors and dark mode is there night light and stuff is there adaptive or auto brightness is there screen timeout you can set up to 30 minutes and rotation you can set it to 180 degree angles and we have the display size and the font size colors are set to adaptive by default here i guess in the lock screen we have these always show time and info double tap to check phone etc then we have the double tap to wake and the enable blurs option in the ambient display we have some ambient display features let me go back to the sounds and here we have these kind of sound settings we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound etc we also have the clear speaker mode so if you want to use this feature you can if your speakers are dirty and here i would say you don't get the me audio direct again but you do get this moto audio so that is great let me scroll down we have the security settings and here we have the fingerprint option the face unlock option and also the app locker first let me set up the face unlock and let me show you how it works so i think it's done setting up the face unlock so right now if i double tap on the lock screen and as you are noticing it pops out the front camera as soon as i double tap over here double tap to wake i mean and as you can see it unlocks let me try one more time as you are noticing, the face unlock speed is completely fine, no issues whatsoever. Now jumping into the app locker settings and this is how the app locker settings CY looks like. And you get this app locker by default, you can lock any particular app from here. And I would say, yes, this is a very helpful like kind of feature. And you can also hide the notification and stuff. And also you can set the lock app after 15 seconds or whenever the screen goes off or just instantly. So whenever you go back from the lock tab, it just like gets locked again. So let me show you how it works and this is how the app locking actually looks like the app lock interface and this shows the pin using option and also the face unlock option and also you can use the fod of course and here if i tap over here as you can see it like directs me back to the app so yes the default app locker is very helpful in my opinion you can lock any particular app from here and talking about daily driving performance yes the performance should be good enough and as this is a oss vendor based rom yes the performance will be better than any other miui vendor based roms you can see the benchmarks from here very good performing benchmarks in my opinion and talking about drm info yes if you have intact drm certification that means it will show you l1 but for me as i have broken my drm certification it shows l3 for me
it passes the safety net test right out of the box so that means you can use google pay or any other banking apps over here without any issues on this particular rom so that's it for this video guys about the nezuko os version 1.2 on the redmi k20 pro let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this video give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and please share this video with your friends if you feel like and yeah this is tito from kerry and tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now